How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to talk about how a hardware wallet works and how you can get started in it. First of all, I've owned cryptos for several years now, including a little bit of Bitcoin, a lot of Dogecoin, and I've always wondered about hardware wallets because I keep on hearing it is more secure than keeping all of this on a website somewhere. Before I begin, I'd like to thank Ledger, which provided me with this Ledger Nano X hardware wallet. Without them sending it to me, I would not have been able to produce this video. Now, cryptocurrencies are stored on a distributed ledger, which is kind of like who owes what, how much coin is in each wallet. And all of this is in a distributed nature. So everybody, you know, there's multiple copies of this and the network always tries to verify each other. So it's really hard to forge something like this. And in order to gain access to one of the wallets and say, okay, I want to use this wallet to send some coin somewhere else, you need some kind of key. And this key is the secret to accessing your cryptocurrencies. When you use a hardware wallet, it's not like you put your Bitcoins or Dogecoin inside this wallet and if you lose it you're gonna lose it forever the way they make these wallets is that it holds the key to your crypto that is secured on the network your crypto resides on in the cloud somewhere across all these different computers that has copies of the ledger itself some people might have like 10,000 bitcoins a lot of money in one of these things and if you lose it this is a huge deal which makes you feel like if you have a hardware wallet, you don't want to carry it around, right? Because if you lose it, you, you don't want to lose everything that you have. But this is not the way these things work. If this hardware wallet is lost or stolen and some random guy goes and opens it up, right? And they press the button and go, okay, how do I access this? And let's say they have one of these as well. They know how to use it. But the first thing that comes up is it asks you for a pin code. Without the pin code, you cannot do anything with this wallet. You cannot access all the stuff that's inside. And let's say you lose it and it was stolen by a sophisticated hacker that knows how to hack hardware. This is what they say. There is a low risk that if your device is lost or stolen, an experienced hacker with engineering skills who has access to the physical device could extract the recovery seeds. Usually with these crypto devices, with security-minded devices, they have built-in chips that have security protocol in it that it's going to hide a bunch of information within the chip itself. So it's not like you can like rip open the chip and then go and probe it or something. Even within the chip itself, it is encrypted as well. So you absolutely need the pin code in order to even start anything. So when you lose this device, you don't lose all your Bitcoin or Dogecoin. You have a copy of these 24 word seeds. You have to write this down somewhere and they give you three cards to write these 24 words and you're supposed to keep them secure. And these cards is your actual wallet. If you have access to these cards or if someone stole these cards, then yes, they can access your cryptocurrencies. If you actually lose a hardware wallet, it's not that big a security breach. You can actually wait a while, wait until your uh, hardware wallet comes. It has a new recovery seed. And then you import all of those assets from your old wallet that you lost into your new wallet. So you can think of this as your crypto assets goes with this 24 word recovery seed. If you are kind of nervous about having your cryptos hang in midair without you having a hardware wallet, you can actually get a software wallet and then import all of those assets in your software wallet just for the time being. And then when you get your hardware wallet, you re-import them again and just go and put them into your hardware wallet. There is a pin code. If you enter in your pin code wrong three times, it's going to wipe the device and then it's as if you have a brand new wallet over here. It doesn't know anything about anything. So you're gonna have to start it new again and then use your 24 word recovery seed and then put those assets back in here. I have some Dogecoin in Coinbase. I have a lot of Dogecoin in uh, Robinhood which right now they don't have wallets yet. I'm like number 957,000 or something. But when they do have wallets, 
I can be certain that I can just transfer as much as I want from Robinhood into this little hardware wallet thing. But for now, I can do it with Coinbase, which has a address of you know my Doge coins, and then I can just take the address from this thing and then go on my Coinbase, send it to the address over here, and you know I sent 50 Doge coins. The network fee is actually 1.44 Doge. This equates to about 30 cents or so for me sending about $11. So this is a little high. It's like 3% or so. It also said the payment will be received in an estimated about six hours, but. Um, in my experience, when I sent it from Coinbase into my hardware wallet, the time it took was almost instantaneous. So I didn't even have to wait an hour or two. It just appeared right away. Now, when I received this device, I was kind of nervous, right? Because I'm on the internet and I don't want some random person hacking this device beforehand and then sending it to me. So I was a little nervous there about using this. Just it's also why I only put a little bit of Dogecoin in there at first. The way to get a little bit more confidence is that Ledger is a company in France. So hopefully this package is arriving from France and not somewhere in the middle of Russia or somewhere. So I got that check. And also when I plug this in, it also have a little check mark next to the Ledger Nano X over here. And it says the device is genuine. So I need to trust Ledger in that they have some way of you know verifying the authenticity of this thing that it has not been tampered with so this check mark is another thing that can help uh, prove to yourself that this thing is legitimate and that you know you're not getting hacked or conned out of your hard-earned cryptocurrencies they do have a cheaper version than this ledger nano x version they have the ledger nano s which is 59 dollars. this one is 119 dollars. you have to install apps to make it compatible with certain cryptocurrencies. So whichever ones that you need to use, you add those apps in here. One thing I did notice is that this thing has two megabytes of storage. You don't need that much storage in order to store 24 words. The ability to secure something that's inside so that it's very hard to hack. That's where the cost comes from. When you have the hardware wallet, it works in conjunction with an app on your phone. If you want to receive Bitcoin or Dogecoin, then you can show the other person your QR code and then they can do the transaction that way. Or if you want to buy something, you can use your app, scan the QR code of the merchant that you want to pay, and then you can pay with your wallet. Right now, not a lot of merchants will accept Dogecoin, so there are places where you can look up a map and it will show you which merchants accepts it. Once Dogecoin becomes more widely accepted, yes, I'm gonna go out there and, and spend my Dogecoin a little bit more. If you guys are interested in getting a Ledger Nano X or S, check out my referral link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching.